getting a job in 2025 is not going to be easy. And while Theo created a really nice video on getting a dev job in 2025, I agree with some of the sentiments in the video, but I don't agree with some of them. But this is not a, a roast or comment on his video, even though it's, it's a good video, you should watch it. I'm going to share some other aspects of the market today and what you should and should not be doing, which is not covered in that video. So first of all, the market is different now. And uh, this is way different from 10 years ago or 11 years ago when I was trying to find a job. It was much of the case where companies would hire junior developers and would then train them to become senior developers, which is actually the right way to go. So if companies you're watching this video, please do that again. Now, since COVID and the recession in the whole world, the markets have deviated a bit from this because almost every company today is now a money making machine, which means that they need to ship things faster. They are probably working as a consultancy based company, majority of them, and they need to either ship fast, make the clients happy, or if there are products or startups, they need to ship fast to get investment, which means that the developers who are going to work on these projects are most likely going to be experienced. And in a lot of cases, if a junior is hired for these roles, it is going to be the case where the development or the shipment will get slowed down. That is the reality. Now, some companies can afford to have this when they have a long-term goal of building a team, but a lot of teams don't have that luxury, especially when we talk about consultancy-based companies. Now, when it comes to product-based companies or enterprise companies, there is a much better possibility of a junior getting into the company as an intern and then growing in the company over the years and even retiring from the company in some cases as well. Now, just to give you a quick reflection of how the market has changed, even for me as a senior developer who has 11 years of experience, I'm a published author of two worldwide books, I have open source library with millions and millions of installs, thousands of GitHub projects using my libraries, and a YouTube channel of worth 20,000 plus, LinkedIn 15,000 plus, Instagram 63,000 plus. If I try to get a job based on all these things that showcase my experience and expertise with all of the applications I've created, videos I've created, articles I've created, content I've created, people that I've trained, conferences that I've talked to, the amount of people or the companies who would reach out to me has significantly dropped. Now, there can be two aspects to this. One, that I am a really senior, senior, senior engineer, which companies won't be affording or they want someone with, let's say, four to five years of experience. That's understandable as well. But just two years ago, I would get a lot of requests for interviews. Even in one week, I would get three to four and I would have to deny a lot of them. I would take some of the interviews to just reevaluate myself. But now, and to be honest, putting it out there bluntly, I don't get any more offers at all. I mean, for the past six to seven months, I haven't got any requests for interviews for a job in Sweden. And even though I've been growing my LinkedIn like crazy, we have grown from 8,000 to 15,000 now, I'm providing value via LinkedIn as well. And I've collaborated with Google to the point where they featured me on their LinkedIn via the Google Cloud page that you can see right here. Even in this particular situation, I'm not getting any job offers. So I think the sweet spot right now, to be honest, is for developers who are senior, which have four to six years of experience, because that's the sweet spot for startups as well, but then also for consultancy as well. And again, it all boils down to what the company can afford to pay to get the outcome that they're looking for. It is what it is. Now, one more thing that Theo also shared was this layoffs chart from layoffs.fyi, which means that in 2024, we have about 150,000 employees that got laid off, which means that if you are a junior who's trying to find job, you are actually competing with a lot of seniors who are already out there searching for jobs. And another big player in this whole situation is AI, which has two perspectives to this. For juniors, the overuse of AI is actually killing their learning and productivity. And I would basically talk about a few ways that they are using, which is absolutely incorrect. And on the other hand, for senior developers, the usage of AI, for example, Claude is making it so fast that instead of going to a junior, I could just ask Claude something and then make it do the things. Now, this 
has its pros and cons while it makes things very efficient for me in the short term i don't have a long-term partner who could be a junior growing into senior role that i could work with but for example just before this video i was working on this simple teleprompter which i wanted to create as an application and here if i show you in an hour or even less than an hour 25 minutes ago i pushed my last commit i was able to create this simple teleprompter using claude for example and i could actually show you how this looks like so this is my teleprompter application where you can put a text here you can decide the speed and you can start playing this now when working with teleprompters you can actually flip this like horizontal or vertical stuff like that you can reset it i obviously had to give it a few prompts and make sure that you know it works the way it does at the moment because initially it was not so for example if i started to run this i couldn't actually scroll manually but now i can with a lot of prompts and suggestions but if i had to explain this to a junior it would take much much more time and that is the reality now even though this is really really bad for the job market especially for freshers and graduates coming out what can you do so i'm going to highlight some things that you can do and some things that you should not do at all first of all usage of ai keep that limited spend time in crafting your cvs crafting your github profiles crafting your linkedin all of these things matter i reviewed about 100 github profiles in my live streams recently and almost 80 percent of them had the same template that github gives you by default and it doesn't really show who you are what you are learning right now what are your goals what makes you excited about programming and what projects are you really working on some people even had like one contribution in the year if the job market is so tough if senior developers are already out there looking for a job it would make it much more difficult for you juniors to find a job if you don't stand out again it is what it is and talking about AI and the usage of LinkedIn, one of the things that I've been advocating for quite a long time is to create a personal brand, which can be done through GitHub projects, LinkedIn. You can also start writing articles. You can also start sharing information on LinkedIn in terms of posts, but not everybody can do that and that's fine. But that means that you're not going to be standing out in the job market. And the reason for standing out is to provide value so you build trust. And that is what I agree with Theo on, according to his video. And that means that when you put yourself out there with proofs and examples that you are eligible for the job that a recruiter is looking for, then that really means that it will take lesser time for the recruiter to hire you or to start a conversation with you. I always say this to all the developers that the goal for you when you're finding a job is to reduce the time it takes for a recruiter to say, this is the right person for the job. Now, for that, you need to optimize your GitHub profile so your projects are listed in the pinned repository. You need to have your projects deployed. Please remove any authentication from your projects. Nobody likes to log in to your application. I'm just gonna say it out loud because that sucks. It's stupid. So remove the authentication or at least provide your basic and most important features without having to authenticate. If for some weird reason you need to have that authentication with your application, then put in the readme a dummy username and password so whoever is looking at your project can just log in or pre-fill the information by default. That would make it much faster for the recruiter and if there is any senior engineer or the CTO looking at your GitHub projects, they can actually find it more useful, see what you have done instead of just ah now i have to log in again another thing that i really really recommend for personal branding as a developer is not to put it for a particular target or not to enforce it every time not to have a call to action not to have your resume there all the time even if you want the job if you can build trust which means that you're putting value out there for example you're creating articles on what's new in javascript what's new in typescript small articles that don't take much time maybe half an hour or an hour and you start putting it out there and you're getting engagement on it people are finding it interesting that in itself will start sort of spread your content to a wider audience and increases the chances of you 
coming in front of a recruiter, a senior developer, and when somebody really knows you, it makes it much easier to get into the job, whether you're trying to reach out by yourself or when you're recommended from someone in the company. And please, I would say again, please, don't ask for referrals from people who have not worked with you. I mean, this goes in the criteria of having common sense, but trust me, people have reached out to me asking me to recommend them or refer them to companies. And I'm usually like, I don't know you, I don't work with you. And that also comes into this whole sort of experience or criteria of building a trust. So if you already know someone who has put content out there, who talks about a certain thing, you already associate or start associating that if I know a job that is related to this, I would probably recommend this person. So you need to make genuine connections instead of having a target all the time that I am connecting with this person for a job. I'm putting this out there for a job because that would remove the authenticity of what you're putting out there. Now I agree and I hear all of you introverts out there, which a lot of us software developers are, who don't want to network with people, who don't want to go to Discord servers or you know spend time in chatting with everyone. In that particular case, you can just create a lot of projects. Create those projects, post it on Reddit, don't look at the comments, that's particularly fine. Or you can just post it on LinkedIn that I created this project. Keep it simple, keep just, some screenshots out there, uh, maybe a video demo, something that stands you out. And if you are expecting that you're just going to be in your room and, you know, not doing anything at all, not working on projects, not working on your skills. And even if you have a lot of skills and you're not putting it out there, I think that's not going to help you in any ways. As I said in the video a lot of time, it is what it is. So in order to actually get a job, you need to not only be skilled, but you need to also show the recruiter and the job that you're applying to that you're the right person for it. And the more you can reduce the time for them to understand that and optimize your whole pitch in terms of your profile, your personality, your interviews, the better it's going to be. It's the same for even if you are applying for, for example, for Google, for Facebook, it doesn't matter how good you are as a front end developer, how quickly you can, you know, create UIs, blah, blah, blah. When you're applying there, you're going to go through their own process. You're going to have to do some lead code. You're going to have to learn a lot of DSA as well. So it doesn't matter what your experience is. If you can't jump over the obstacle that the company has for you to be hired, it's not going to be worth it. And again, I wish it was different. I wish it was the same as it was 11 years ago, but it is what it is. So I hope this video actually gives you some insights of how to land a developer job in 2025 what you need to do and if you have more questions you require more clarity type in the comments and if you're actually looking for a job and you have some projects to show off i would highly encourage that you put them in the comments that could be your first step to putting it out there for people to try it out so try that and as always happy coding i'm going to see you in the next video